what are the good things to practice about a backbeat? Okay, well, that will surprise you maybe, but you go to the rudimental drumming. And not to be a rudimental drumming, so don't play rudiments like this. Very neat. No, you have to make it as you as if you are playing a concert. So, in rudiments, there are a lot of left-hand accents. And your left hand and your right hand accent has to be at the same impact as your backbeat. So for me, a seven strokes roll is great to practice. Because you're starting with your right hand, but you end with your left hand. Backbeat, if you are a right-handed drummer. That's your backbeat. So practice it as if you are playing your backbeat. Why I love this rudimental seven-stroke roll? Because it's in three. It's the family of three. It's in 60-note triplets or 32nd-note triplets. It's how you see it. But if you play a double stroke in the world of three, then you have to spread the notes a little bit. So you have to have much more control over your playing. And that's so good for practicing the backbeat. And try not to use bounces at all. So the double is not like this. But actually you play two singles. Out of your risk. And what's very important is now you can watch how your dynamic range is happening. You know... Soft is, I think, for me, two centimeters, one centimeter above my head. And loud is really this. So I have a very big range. You can hear that back in your playing. A lot of my students, soft is this. So there you have a very small dynamic range. So that makes rudimental drumming fun. Make music, you know. So the whole Wilcoxon book is music. A lot of play people play it as an exercise. It's not an exercise. He's a great composer of music. Wilcoxon write music tunes. So... So I play it out of my head, but and the second part.
What's great to practice for your backbeat are flams. Steve Gadd. Steve Gadd is only about flams. When he practices, he's gonna put out a new rudimental book. I assure you, flams. Flams and flams. And he has, for me, one of the greatest backbeats. And it's not only for me. That's why he plays on so much records. He is the perfect combination of being so musical. His musicality is so high. And the perfect backbeat. Yeah, man. Not the technical skills. That's great, you know. That's great that he can play all that all that very difficult thing. But why he got the gig, I think, is of his great timing and his great backbeat, but especially his musicality. So I said that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So flams. There you have to have really a technical skill. So the accents of the flams make them again as loud as possible. But the, the between notes in the flams play them as soft as possible. So this is one of our favorites, is the flamme cue. So know the words, know which uh, rudimental you play. The flamme cue. It's great to practice your backbeat because that left hand is really an accent. That's not what uh, I have seminars online of Mr. Steve Gatt, and he does all this kind of exercise, the flamme cue, to loosen up his wrist, he says always. But that is how you get control about your backbeat. yesterday asked me but Ruben you play very much with your finger on your stick like this you know and uh, but the first lesson I got my teacher said that that's not good okay the secret behind that there is no good or bad there are so many different ways to hold your stick so find your own technique and get control over it this is the way Steve Gatt plays it he's not a very bad drummer I think a lot with his finger He says, I don't know why. I think because that came out of he plays, is very classical trained and he plays mallets. So this is how people who play marimba hold their sticks. And your fulcrum, that's very important. What's your fulcrum? Is here, you know? So my fulcrum is not here. There you don't do that, but here. But if you have a here a fulcrum, you have two fingers free. So it's not, not so important that they have no function. <laughs> But that's a whole different story. But it's very important if you see me drum. So don't comment me about that. <laughs> about that. So it starts with a flam tap. Know that that's a flam tap. So you can practice only a flam tap. And watch the dynamics and the sweet spot. It's solo number 13. It's whole in in the in the six eight. So what's very good for you, start practicing the six eight exercises out of that Wilcoxon book. Because that's all in fault in free. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the flam accents is 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 the most famous rudimental exercise in free. It's it's a, a triplet with a flam in the beginning.
And then you go to the 60 notes, and that you can play the best in a double. So you can practice your double the best way. There's a 70, 17 stroke roll in that exercise. It's amazing. Hey! So the secret is that you can play the soft notes really controlled, again, as playing a single stroke. And the slower you do it, the more difficult it is. It's amazing. A lot of my students play this at this tempo. And you, hear, you hear something like this. You know, totally no control. So stop doing that. Go to the place where you have control. So this is all Wilcoxon number 13. Fool around with it. Make music. That's my suggestion of playing the groove. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. (laughs) 